welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 40. I mean, wow, it's been a while, but here we are. Let's read the first eight verses today in this chapter. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the month you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall place the ark of the testimony there, and you shall screen the ark with the veil. You shall bring in the table and arrange what belongs on it, and you shall bring in the lampstand and mount its lamps. Moreover, you shall set the gold altar of incense before the ark of the testimony upon and up. Set up the veil for the doorway to the tabernacle. You shall set the altar burnt offering in front of the doorway of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall set the laver between the tent of meeting and altar and put water in it. You shall set up the court all around and hang up the veil for the gateway of the court. So let's just pause there. This is now the setting up of the sanctuary. Have you maybe noticed as we've been looking at this all these uh, 40 chapters, a lot of repetition. There's nowhere else in the whole Bible, when we take the whole Bible into account, uh, there's nowhere else uh, that has so much repetition in it. So much repetition. Remember, these writing materials and so on were scarce. The page stuff for pages was scarce. When things get a repetition in the Bible, it's, it's like a giant thing the first time. It's a very giant thing the second time. And this, this tabernacle stuff is, has happened many, many times. Lots of repetition here. So again, uh, putting the underline on what? This is important. This is important. Don't walk past this. Repetition underlines the importance. In fact, I have a note here from Hamilton's Bible Commentary in Exodus. He says, uh, the repetition is almost verbatim, something that is rare in other repeated text. Page 611 from Hamilton's Commentary. Nowhere does repetition operate on such a massive scale as in these 12 chapters. This is Exodus 25 to 31 and Exodus 35 to 39. So here we have a lot of repetition. Why? Because God is saying, hey, are you awake? Are you listening? Pay attention. This is important stuff. This is about sin out in Jesus in. This is important. We're going to get sin out. Sin, getting sin out isn't a very large priority for a lot of Christians. They kind of don't have this big picture of sin. They have this little picture of sin. Sin is inevitable. It's going to just happen. So God, that's okay. God knows it's inevitable. So he'll forgive and, and away we go. Uh, well, sin is not inevitable. If sin's inevitable, then the devil has a winning argument here in the great conflict between good and evil. Sin is not inevitable. Jesus came and showed us that sin is not inevitable. And through his, God's work of transforming the inner life of the person, we, uh, the universe is going to be provided with yet another case, another demonstration. Not only Christ outside of me, Christ on the cross apart from me, but Christ in me, Christ the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27, uh, this is God working. There's a demonstration of, that Jesus makes objectively outside on the cross. There's an, a demonstration that Jesus makes subjectively inside in the human heart. And that flows out into the world and God's goodness and reinvades, invades, reinvades his world through, through you and me. So, yes, we have here uh, the tabernacle now. It's all going up and it's all being set up just according to the instruction. It's important. And so we're in Exodus 40 and now it's not going to, you know, it doesn't end without it being set up. It ends with the whole thing set up and placed in operation. So, friends, God is on his throne. God hasn't given up on us. God has not said, oh, that sin business, I really sort of overdid it, so I'm just going to go ahead and accept some, some degree of sin. That's not the way it works. God is going to remove sin once and for all. That, that's always been the plan. No change in the plan. Just like when the Ten Commandments uh, were broken on the first tablets and God wrote them on the second set of tablets, didn't change a thing. God's plan in the beginning was that humans would live above sin. We wouldn't be sinning. And so here when we have God's plan, we see again, all done here, the book of Exodus didn't change a thing. God's plan for you and I is so good. It is so awesome to live without sinning for Jesus in the power and the full power of Jesus. That's God's plan for you and I. How could we not say, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord, give me the full treatment so that I can be more like Jesus. God bless you today. See you tomorrow morning. Thank you.